Good morning, Washington! How y'all doing, everybody? It's the 17th of April, 2014. Kind of, kind of a heavier pair of camos on today. They're uh, kind of the chillier weather. You're back to long pants again. No more shorts for a couple more days. So hopefully we'll get the shorts back on when the next week or something. The temperature warms up. Oh, I kind of like the cool weather. It's fine. I like it 60 degrees or 55 or... 40, I don't know, as long as it's not snowing. Anyhow, how you doing, everybody? Dave TV for the 17th of April. Oh, damn it. I'm, I I get the show all set up, and then I forget stuff. Hold on. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh. <laughs> it's like, okay, so this was in uh, it, like Express yesterday. The man behind Allen. Um, one of my favorites is T Steve Coogan. Steve Coogan, he was in the movie Philomena, if you saw that with Judy Dench. Really good. He has done a lot of things. He's very well known in the UK. Um, but he does this character called Alan Partridge. And uh, it would be really, if you're into radio, if you like radio in America, if you're into the biz, you know, and you know, all that stuff, you really would like Alan's character. He had two two DVDs. This one was released in the United States a couple years ago. When was this? 2007 or 6 or something. And I'm sure it's no longer in print. It's really hard to find. You might find a couple used copies somewhere. But this was really cool. It's he, He's just this washed up, pompous ass, BBC television. Now he's going into radio because he's sinking in the career, so to speak. Really funny guy. Pompous ass, weird guy. Um, I'm Alan Partridge, and it, it kind of traces his career from a kind of a major BBC presenter, kind of a talk show host. He gets canned. He then goes up to northeastern England to this town called Norfolk, and then he works at a radio station there. And then he even gets demoted even further to another station called North Norfolk Digital as his career gradually sinks and sinks. Anyhow, they had this, and then they came out with season two of it, which was just – which was – um. Only released in the UK, it's a region two, but I figured out ways to strip the region coding from this so I can play it on all my players. <laughs> so it's region coding is so stupid. I mean, no, you know, no, no, no. But anyhow, then he came out with a thing called Mid Morning Matters. Go to go to um, YouTube and Google Mid Morning Matters or I'm Alan Park because you can find a whole bunch of clips and even some entire episodes on there. But it's wonderful to watch. And anyhow, this was in Lay Express, and it's talking about how there he put out a movie, um, an Alan Partridge character movie that was called Alpha Papa last year in the UK, and it's being released in America. You know, I'm just going to play in some art cinemas, and maybe they'll put it out on DVD. But I highly recommend it. If you like radio and you're into all the kind of crazy pomposities of on-air personalities, uh, check out. Alan Partridge, because he is very, very funny. Washington Post. You know, one of my pet peeves with the Washington Post, again, um, is this lazy, dumbass, reliable source column. I can't stand the style section. It is just terrible. But here's another thing. You know, here's Kevin Spacey. Oh, Kevin Spacey was seen eating at a local restaurant. You know, if you're if you're a, if you're someone who's supposed to be in Washington, like a senator or a congressman or a lobbyist or even an actor who has a show based here, and you're seen around town, is that really friggin' news? I mean, especially if you're just seen at a restaurant. Okay, if Kevin Spacey ran through ran down K Street naked with a pack of dogs chasing him, that would be news. If Ken, Kevin Spacey was arrested in a park for doing something nasty, that would be news. If Kevin Spacey choked on a ham sandwich and, and you know, um, um, uh, J.C. Hayward came up behind him and gave him a Heilich maneuver and saved his life, that would be news. But just having him eating at a restaurant, like, you know, this is why this is so friggin'. It's yes, oftentimes yesterday's news or stupid stuff like that. You know, okay, if it was, you know, some out-of-towner that was in town for a special reason, you know, that maybe you could report that. But somebody who's supposed to be in Washington or supposed to be seen here is seen here just having lunch? I don't know, man. That ain't that ain't news to me, man. It's just dumb. It's dopey. It's stupid. So I get an email, not for the mailbag. I am curious. 
If you have quarterly morning show radio numbers for the past year, I am interested to see if Kane has fallen apart with all the changes that have happened going back to when Sammy left. I know a lot of people stopped listening, mo mostly after Sarah left. <coughs> and, you know, whatever. But uh, blah, 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 blah. So anyhow. Uh, so I decided to pull, you know, we got the uh, March radio ratings for Washington market, for the Washington market yesterday. Yesterday. So I took a look at them. I'm going to go through the stations and show you, you know, a little more in depth of where things stand in terms of their day parts. This is the money demo. Okay. We're not looking at the six pluses or the 12 pluses, which nobody cares about any other than you know, whatever. We're looking at the money demo. Money demo. It's 2554, okay? And who leads in that money demo? Well, that very station, Hot 99.5 WIHT. Uh, first place, full days, third place in morning. So, you know, and then you look at it for the whole month and, you know, Kane's held solid for third place. So I'd have to answer that questioner's question with a no. Um, Kane is doing just fine. Thank you with all the changes to his show. Um but Hot 99.5 does take first place in afternoons, they take first place in evenings, and they take first place on the weekend. So, again, very good station. Now, the interesting thing about this whole thing about Hot 99.5, even though their ratings are great and they whip PGC's ass, PGC, you know, just kind of a you know, rhythmic contemporary station, so, you know, CBS, and they're like, you know, 10th place, 11th place in the, ra in the ratings lately. Um, they still, PGC beats the crap out of them in terms of revenue. It's, it's the whole thing about, hey, the ratings often don't really matter. Anyhow, in the money demo, T.O.P. is second place. Their mornings are first and their afternoons are second. So, you know, solid performer there. Now, again, in the overall numbers, when we looked at the, what is it, the six pluses or the 12 pluses, they were first place. H.U.R. is third place. Their morning show, um, Steve Harvey at fourth place. Their afternoons are doing just great. Fourth place. Um, they do really well in evenings at third, and they do great on the weekends at second. Whamu is fourth, mornings second place, afternoons third place, uh, middays tenth. Uh, DC 101, you know, even though they do particularly well in the 2554 demos, when you break them down into the overall numbers, they don't do quite as well. But when you look at that focus demo, they do very well. Fifth place overall. Um, Elliot, despite the fact that he's no longer on in New York, which was a stupid move anyhow, putting him on WOR, fifth place, strong ratings for him, fourth place in afternoons, fifth place on the weekends. W Big still doing really well there, sixth place, 11th place in mornings, you know. Maybe if they didn't have piped in big rig, they might do a little better than that. Third place, Lisa Berrigan does really well in the afternoons and 12th place in after, in middays rather, and 12th place in afternoons. They do really well on the weekends. A fourth place finish for W Big and the Money Dem. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. WMMJ is seventh place. Tom Joyner is sixth in the mornings. They do ninth in the afternoons. Wash, seventh place. Seventh place for them with Lou in the mornings. Now, I, you know, there were a lot of rumors that Jack Diamond might be coming. I just don't, I don't know. I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Lou does great in the mornings. Uh, they do even better in middays at fourth place, ninth place in afternoons, twelfth place on the weekends. Fresh 94-7, ninth place overall, tenth place with Tommy McFly in the mornings. So again, the, again, WID, Fresh 94-7, Fresh event does better when you look at its money demo numbers than the overall numbers. KYS at 10th place, 13th with Russ Parr. PGC 11th place. Overall, they, you know, they kind of are just, just almost making that top 10. You know, sometimes they pop in, but then they pop back out again. 14th place with Pablo. He's improving. I mean, he's not as bad as he was. So the ratings for the morning show are getting better. They're still not, I'm sure, where CBS wants them. But what the heck, if you're making money, what does it matter? You know, with all of PGC's ratings problems last year, they still ended up being the second highest biller, ad revenue biller in the market, regardless of it. So what does it matter? <laughs> uh, PGC does 10th place in midday, 7th place in afternoons, and 10th on the weekends. GTS, Christian Contemporary, 12th place, 9th place in mornings. MZQ, 13th place. They're 15th place in um, mornings. Um yeah, you could say, you know, they were they varied between 9th and 17th place for the month of March. I guess that was before they 
put the new guy in. Uh, the guy being, what's his name? Booger? Boxer? Bo they got rid of Boxer and they got some other guy with a B. I can't remember his name. But anyhow, the, the new guy that's being pumped in from, uh, piped in from Nashville. Uh, I guess it doesn't show up yet because these are really March ratings. So we'd have to look probably more at April numbers for that. Uh, and the March ratings, these are probably February-ish numbers. So anyhow. Um, P uh, praise 13th place, 16th in mornings for them. MAL 15th place overall. Again, they do worse in the money demo than they do in the overall. Why? Because they skew old. They have a lot of old folks that are over 54 listening to the station. And therefore, they do worse in the money demos because they don't count anybody over 54. But anyhow, P, uh, MAL 15th place, 12th place in mornings. They do 5th place in middays. I don't know whether that's the crazy Chris Plant or the even crazier Rush Limbaugh, but they do very well in, midday, in afternoons. Uh, middays. Afternoons is 18th place. Uh, they're not doing so great in afternoons. You know, I don't think Michael Savage is a good fit. And Michael Savage is one of those kind of kook ball talkers that sounds good late at night. He was one of those nut jobs that you know, if you're listening at 10 o'clock at night or 2 in the morning, he's okay. He's just not a daytime. He doesn't have that daytime appeal. He's kind of a nutty overnight kind of weirdo. I just think he's absolutely wrong for the three to six o'clock or three to five o'clock shift there. I just, he's wrong, wrong, wrong. They need to just, they need to take that afternoon, make it a live and local show. And I know guys like Bill Heston at MAL agree with me. I know that. But the dipshits that run Cumulus you know, they can't do anything right. You look at their New York ratings. Cumulus, they have that country station in New York. Lousy ratings. All their state, and WABC is getting lousy ratings. All their stations are getting lousy ratings. It's a terrible company and they don't know what they're doing. Especially here in Washington. Look at that. One station that took the huge hit in, in revenue for 2013 was WRQX. Ratings and revenue right down the toilet for them. Just a mismanaged company. Now, I, you know... I don't know. I like some of the guys over there at Cumulus DC. I think they're good guys, but I think they're kind of bucking the idiots down in Atlanta. I really do. So we'll see. We shall see. Right, Mark O'Brien, Bill Hess, good guys. I like them both. But, you know, they're dealing with these dip wads down in Atlanta. You know? Ah! <laughs> uh, well, oh, let me check the time here. Let me see how, how much... Oh, 12 minutes. Okay, got to wrap this up soon. WTEM, 16th place overall, 20th place in mornings. Again, they need a live and local morning show. They need to hire Don Gerano or somebody, anybody. 7th place in midday. See, they do live and local and they get good ratings. Um, uh, Zabin, 14th place. Uh, RQX, again, look at them. They're 18th place in the money demo, um, which is a little better than they were doing. They were probably down in the 20s back in the beginning of the year. But still, their morning show with Burt, 21st place. It's just not working. 20th place midday, 17th place afternoons, 18th place evenings, 13th on the weekends. The station is underperforming. They need a major renovation. They maybe need to go back to the old Q107 logo. They need a major change, something. They do have a new PD now, so let's see what he does. El Zal, 19th place, 17th place mornings. You know, the ratings are okay. Again, if they were on an inside the Beltway signal, not out there in Annapolis, they'd do a hell of a lot better, which is a clue to what maybe what RQX ought to be doing. Uh, inside the Beltway, some kind of Spanish thing. I don't know. WETA, 20th place. DCN, you know, a little Spanish station there on the TV frequency of 877, 21st place. Uh Watt House, WAVA at 22nd place, QSR 23rd in the money demo. Again, QSR, the fact that they're 23rd in the money demo in the Washington market says, and they're that, you know, if someone put a QSR type format, a Jack Oldies format on an inside the Beltway or a major signal in Washington, you know it would do them a lot better than that. It's just showing you if this Baltimore station can get 23rd place in Washington in a crowded market like this, if if that format was on a good signal in Washington, it would do even way better than that. 23rd Third also for WERQ there in the Washington market. KDV down there in Manassas, that little Spanish station on 106.3, 25th place. Tied with WTNT, 102.9, another Spanish station. They're both Metro Radio. It's interesting that they're both, both their stations are tied. FRE at Frederick, Country Music, 27th place. Uh, we got BQB. Where's WNEW? Where are they? I don't, I don't see them. Where are they? Bub, 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 bub. Did I miss him? Wait, I must have missed. WNEW, 28th place. 
in the money demo. 28th place in mornings, 25th place in afternoons, 35th place on the weekends. Oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. You know, the funny thing is up in Baltimore, they, remember the old HFS, WHFS on 99.1, which is where WNEW is now, but WHFS moved up to Baltimore. Now they're, they were on for a while, a 200-watt signal at a north Western Baltimore, 97.5. They actually billed, got more money billing in 2013 than the big, big all newser did. You know, it's the ghost of Jake Einstein coming back and saying, Hey, you took my station away. I'm going to show you. <laughs> I don't know. All right, folks. What else do I got to say? That's about it, huh? Oh, 15 minutes. Man, time flies when you're having fun. Thanks for watching Dave TV. Buck, I'm Dan.